Hello, this video explains how to install Google's machine learning framework, TensorFlow, on the Raspberry Pi. By following the instructions in this video, you will be able to use TensorFlow on your Raspberry Pi for machine learning applications such as using image classification to identify the type of animal in a picture. The sequel to this video will show you how to set up object detection on the Raspberry Pi to detect and identify various objects in live video feeds. The instructions in this video are taken from Sam J. Abraham's guide on GitHub, which is linked in the video description below. The guide hasn't been updated in a while, so we need to make several changes in order to get things to work with the more recent versions of the installation tools. To get TensorFlow working on the Raspberry Pi, we'll need to compile it from source using Bazel and then install it. Bazel and TensorFlow both take several hours to build, so the whole process takes about 10 hours. However, it only takes about an hour to gather packages and get everything set up for the builds. The long builds can be left to run overnight or while you are at work or school. Your Raspberry Pi should have an SD card that's at least 16 gigabytes with several gigabytes of free space. Also, you will need a blank USB flash drive that has at least one gigabyte of free storage space. There are five steps total. One, update the Raspberry Pi and install necessary packages. Two, set up the flash drive as additional swap memory space. Three, compile and install Bazel. Four, compile and install TensorFlow. And five, test your installation. Okay, let's do this. For this tutorial, I'm using a Raspberry Pi Model 3B with a fresh installation of Raspbian Stretch version 9. You can see instructions for how to install the latest version of Raspbian on the raspberrypi.org website. This tutorial should also work on a Pi Model 3B Plus or a Model 2. TensorFlow itself will be built and installed for Python 3 rather than Python 2.7. First, open a terminal and update the Raspberry Pi by entering sudo apt-git update. Then issue sudo apt-git upgrade. This will update all the software packages currently installed on the Pi and can take up to 30 minutes or longer. Next, we need to install some packages that are used by Bazel and TensorFlow. These might already be installed and up-to-date on your system, but issue these commands anyway just to make sure. Issue sudo pip3 install wheel. Okay, and then sudo apt-git install gcc g++. And finally, sudo apt-git install swig. Now, if apt-git can't find the swig package, issue sudo apt-git update. And then, after it's done updating, issue the apt git install swig command. Oops, uh, sudo apt git install swig. Okay, now we have all the packages we need for a basic installation of TensorFlow. The Raspberry Pi 3 only has one gigabyte of RAM, which isn't quite enough for it to compile TensorFlow from source. We need to add some additional memory by setting up a flash drive as swap space. First, take a blank USB flash drive with at least one gigabyte of storage space and plug it into the Pi. Then, find the path to the flash drive by issuing sudo blkid. Your flash drive is usually the one with the dev slash sda or sda1 path. Unmount the drive by issuing sudo umount slash dev slash sda or whatever the path to your drive is. Set your drive as swap space by issuing sudo mkswap slash dev slash sda. Copy the UUID listed next to the device. Now we need to add the swap space to the file system table by editing the etc fstab file. Open it using sudo nano slash etc slash fstab. On the last line before the comments, add uuid equals and then paste the UUID you got from the make swap command. Then type none space swap space switch comma prime PRI equals five space zero space zero. Save and exit the file by pressing control X and then Y. Then issue sudo swap on dash A to activate the swap space. We'll use a tool from Google called Bazel to compile TensorFlow from its source code. But first, before we use Bazel to build TensorFlow, we have to build Bazel itself from scratch. 
We'll make a folder in the home directory to hold all the files used to build Bazel and TensorFlow. Make a folder called tf by issuing mkdirtf, and then move into it by typing cdtf. Download the source code for Bazel version 0.8.0 .0 from GitHub by issuing wgit https github.com slash bazel build slash bazel slash releases slash download slash 0.8.0 slash bazel dash 0.8.0 dash dist dot zip enter and go ahead and let that download. After it's downloaded, unzip the contents by issuing unzip d bazel bazel 0.8.0 dist.zip. This unzips all of the documents from what you just downloaded into a folder called bazel. Okay, before we continue, it's time for a quick discussion on versions. Google's hardworking employees are constantly releasing new versions of Bazel and TensorFlow. Unfortunately, sometimes the newest versions don't work on the Raspberry Pi. I got errors while trying to build TensorFlow versions 1.8 and 1.7 on the Pi. Fortunately, TensorFlow version 1.5 builds just fine. Hopefully, newer versions of TensorFlow will be more compatible with the Pi. We're using Bazel to build TensorFlow. The newest version of Bazel is 0.12.0, .0, but we have to use Bazel version 0.8.0 .0 to build TensorFlow 1.5. If you try to build a newer version of TensorFlow, you will also need to use a more recent version of Bazel. As long as you stick to the instructions in this video and use Bazel 0.8 to build TensorFlow 1.5, you should be able to get everything to work. If you train a model using a certain version of TensorFlow on a PC, then the Raspberry Pi must have the same version of TensorFlow installed on it in order for it to work. My previous video, which shows how to train an object detection model, uses TensorFlow version 1.5, so I need to have TensorFlow 1.5 installed on my Raspberry Pi as well. Now, let's keep going with building Bazel version 0.8. Change into the unzip folder by issuing cd bazel. To build Bazel, we need to give the Java compiler some extra memory space by editing the compiler file. Open the file by issuing sudo nano scripts slash bootstrap slash compile.sh. Then navigate to line 117. At the end of the block of code that starts with run and javuk, add dash j dash xmx 500m. Then save and exit the file. Now it's time to build Bazel. Be sure to close out of any other applications so you can give the compiler more memory space. Start the build by issuing sudo dot slash compile dot sh. It takes the Pi about an hour and 10 minutes to build the entire package from source, so find something fun to do while it's building. After the build is finished, copy the output to your local user binary directory by issuing sudo cp output slash bazel space slash user user local slash bin slash bazel. Enter bazel to install the package. When it's done, move back to the tf directory. Now that we've got bazel built and installed, we can use it to compile TensorFlow. First, clone the TensorFlow repository from GitHub by issuing git clone dash dash recurse submodules https github.com slash tensorflow slash tensorflow dot git. This downloads the repository, which is about 150 megabytes. Okay, now we have the most recent version of TensorFlow's source code on the Raspberry Pi. However, we want to use TensorFlow version 1.5 since the most recent version won't build correctly. Move into the TensorFlow directory by t typing cd tensorflow. Check out version 1.5 by issuing git checkout v1.5.0. Inside the models directory, issue the following command, grep rl apostrophe lib 64 apostrophe bar xarg space sed dash i apostrophe s slash lib 64 slash lib slash g enter 
This searches through all the files inside the directory and changes all references for 64-bit implementations to 32-bit ones because the Raspberry Pi is a 32-bit system. Thanks again goes to Sam J. Abrahams for providing this command in his guide. Now configure the build by issuing dot slash configure. Since we're building TensorFlow for Python 3, specify the Python location as user bin Python 3. Then use the default path to the 3.5 packages. Say yes for the jmalloc option, but otherwise say no to all the other options. And just use the default optimization flags. No for Android. And now configuration's finished. Now there's a nice long command to start the TensorFlow build. I'll include it in the video description so you can copy paste it directly. Okay, so here's the command. Basically, it just specifies compiler options for the build and points it at the package builder. Before you press enter, make sure all other applications are closed. Compiling TensorFlow uses 100% of the Pi's memory and processing power. The build takes 6 hours and 14 minutes on my Raspberry Pi, so you definitely want to start it before heading to school or work for the day or before going to bed. Okay, here we go. Alright, welcome back. It looks like the TensorFlow build has completed successfully. If the build didn't work for you, try rebooting the Raspberry Pi and rerunning the configure and build commands. At the end of this video, I'll list a few other things you can try if you get errors. Now, go ahead and create an installation package from the compiled binary by issuing bazel-bind slash tensorflow slash tools slash pip underscore package slash build underscore pip underscore package and then space slash temp slash tensorflow pkg. Finally, let's install TensorFlow using the wheel file we just built. Open a new terminal and change to the slash temp slash tensorflow underscore pkg directory. Enter ls, copy the name of the wheel file, and then type sudo pip3 install slash tmp slash tensorflow underscore pkg slash, and then paste the name of the file you just copied, and press enter. All right, TensorFlow is officially installed on your Raspberry Pi. Before we take TensorFlow for a test run, let's remove the USB swap drive. Issue sudo swap off slash dev slash sta, or whatever the path to your drive is, to turn off the swap space. If you don't remember the path to your flash drive, you can issue the sudo blkid command to check. Then, undo the changes you made to the fstab file by issuing sudo nano slash etc slash fstab and delete or comment out the line that you added earlier. Lastly, reboot your Raspberry Pi by issuing sudo reboot. After all the hard work it's done to build TensorFlow, the Pi needs a little refresher. After the Pi is rebooted, open up a terminal and start a Python shell by typing Python3. Test out TensorFlow with a hello world example by entering the following commands. Import TensorFlow as tf, this one takes a while, but if it works, that means TensorFlow installed correctly. Okay, and then hello equals tf.constant. What's up, world? And then ses equals tf.session. And finally, print ses.run hello. Okay, if everything installed correctly, what's up, world, should print in the terminal. Now, let's try a slightly more interesting test with TensorFlow's image classification abilities. From your home directory, create a folder named TensorFlow1 and cd into it. Clone the TensorFlow models repository from GitHub by typing git clone https github.com slash tensorflow slash models dot git. Then cd into the models slash tutorials slash image slash image net directory and issue python3 classify 
image.py. This is a quick tutorial script from TensorFlow that will download the Inception model and use it to classify the image of a panda. Here's the panda that it'll classify. As you can see, it accurately classifies the image as a panda. You can test it on other images by specifying the path to the image when you call the script. For instance, I can run it on this picture of a cat by typing python3 classify image.py dash dash image file equals home slash pi slash cat dot jpg. Okay, and this one you can see it wasn't quite as confident about it being a cat, but it did successfully identify it as a cat. If you get errors, there are a few things you can try. One, reboot the Pi and try again. It sounds trivial, but this actually has fixed my errors before. Two, do a Google search on your error. Usually you can find a solution to the error on Stack Exchange or GitHub. Finally, there's the nuclear option. Start from a fresh installation of Raspbian Stretch and redo this entire tutorial. It may be painful, but it's a good way to make sure that you have the exact same environment as I used for this video. Running TensorFlow on a portable device like the Raspberry Pi provides a lot of flexibility and opportunity for cool machine learning applications where it isn't possible to use a full-sized PC. There are several good tutorials to get started with on TensorFlow's website at tensorflow.org tutorials. You can also check out the sequel to this video, which shows you how to set up the TensorFlow Object Detection API on the Raspberry Pi. This will allow you to detect and identify objects in videos and webcam feeds. I also have a video that shows how to train an object detection classifier on your PC, which you can then use on the Raspberry Pi. I don't recommend trying to train any models on the Pi because it will take a very long time due to the Pi's weak processor. You can train a model on your PC and then deploy it on the Raspberry Pi. However, the computer you train the model on must have the same version of TensorFlow that is installed on your Raspberry Pi, or you will most likely encounter errors. For now, I recommend using TensorFlow version 1.5 on everything. I hope you're able to find cool applications for using machine learning on the Raspberry Pi. Please feel free to share any fun projects you're doing in the comments section on this video. Stay tuned for my next video, which will show you how to use the TensorFlow Object Detection API on the Raspberry Pi to detect and identify objects in live video feeds. As always, thank you for watching and see you next time.